Carlson's report is now getting substantial attention, attention from Russian state television, which is promoting his theory and his suggestion for how Russia could strike back a U.S. interest in light of the supposed attack. And what Carlson suggested was, was that Russia could attack our internet cables, the undersea cables that carry our uh, telephone and, and internet and data services between the United States and Europe. <laughs> Excuse me, yes, a lot of that... Pardon me. A lot of that is uh, on satellites now, but an awful lot of it is still carried by those undersea cables. Um, Carlson's, they, they note Carlson's coverage of the crisis created by Russia's February invasion of Ukraine generally aligns with the Kremlin's preferred narratives to the point where Russian state media outlets following their government's explicit instructions regularly air clips from Tucker Carlson's program. And just at hours after Russian officials floated the narrative that the U.S. was responsible for damaging the pipelines, Carlson adopted it as his own. He went on to say, uh, Putin would not do that. He would have to be a suicidal moron to blow up your own energy pipeline. Right. Or you'd have to be a dictator of a country who is seeing the energy pipeline as something that is not going to be used in the future. Europe is rapidly de, uh, disconnecting themselves. Well, they hadn't been pulling any gas through that pipeline since August to begin with. And they're getting ready for winter. Uh, they're buying liquid natural gas and things like that. I mean, it's just a whole different thing. You know, Europe is going a different direction, and Putin realizes this. And by blowing up the pipeline, all he's doing is forcing them to do it, you know, sooner rather than next spring. It's going to have to be in time for this winter. But, you know, instead, again, back to Media Matters, instead, Carlson strongly suggested that the U.S. had sabotaged the pipelines. Quote, if they did this, this will be one of the craziest, most destructive things any American administration has ever done. But it would be totally consistent with what they do. What do they do? They destroy. This is a primetime host on a major television network saying that the United States' mission is to destroy things around the world. And this is the party of patriotism? These are the people who call themselves patriots? He, he went on to say, we've entered a new phase, one in which the United States is directly at war with the largest nuclear power in the world. If we actually blew up the Nord Stream pipelines, why wouldn't Russia sever, sever under, undersea internet cables? What would happen if they did that? And that little clip of Tucker Carlson saying basically the Russians should cut our internet cables has gone completely viral in Russia, you know, because the Russian government is pumping and amplifying it. People are wondering, you know, what's going on? Why is it that the fascist, new fascist leader of Italy, who is a fascist, she's not just a, a, a neo-fascist, I mean, her party is literally the reincarnation of Mussolini's fascist party, the bro brothers of Italy, and, and this is a woman who was a fascist activist when she was 15 years old. People are wondering, why is it that she is being loved on by Republican politicians who are tweeting congratulations on winning the, the seat and all this kind of stuff? People are wondering why Republicans are doubling down on their affection for Saudi Arabia and Russia and Putin and Mohammed bin Salman, you know, echoing Donald Trump. Why is it that when Donald Trump makes death threats against the, the Senate Majority Leader and racist threats against his wife, not a single Republican speaks up? Why is it that in individual states around the country that have Republican-controlled governors, governments, they're, they're literally saying, no, we're not going to count the votes this fall. We're just going to tell you how you voted. We're changing the rules, and we're going to take it to the Supreme Court to, to, uh, to say that we have the right. It doesn't... As, as Michael Cohen said, Donald Trump loved to quote back decades ago, it doesn't matter who votes, it matters who counts the votes. Why is it that Americans can watch all this going on, this, this open embrace of fascists, this embrace by CPAC of the new fascist leader of Italy and, and of Viktor Orban, the fascist leader of Hungary, and all the, and at, at the last CPAC and, and uh, at the last, uh, you know, uh, Nick Fuentes event, just openly saying, yes, you know, Vladimir Putin, yes, you're our guy, go on. You know, why is it that, the, that this is happening? I can only see one answer, one explanation. And that is that the Republican Party 
no longer even pretends to believe in democracy. And that the reason why they no longer even pretend to believe in democracy is because they know that their days are numbered. They know that Americans have figured out their game. For 40 years, we have been in this neoliberal experiment, this Reaganism experiment that the Republican Party foisted upon us, and some Democrats went along with. And we now can see the wreckage of it all around us, as can the Brits when Liz Truss tried to, tried to pull a Reagan and it blew up in her face. And so the Republican Party, you know, unlike the Tories in the United Kingdom who are, you know, will continue to try these things, but, but you know, at the very least, they're just going to back off and say, well, I guess we've got to come up with some other way to make rich people rich. Here in the United States, what's going on with big bucks from a lot of right-wing billionaires is a program to basically end democracy in the United States, to replace majority rule with permanent minority rule. And they're, they're doing this very, very aggressively. Unless you, know, unless you can convince me otherwise, do you have some other explanation for why the GOP is openly embracing fascists like Orban and, and uh, uh, oh, what's her name, Maloney? Yeah, Maloney, the new Italy, leader in Italy.